Hi, my name is Rick and welcome to the Fellowship of the Wrench. Today we're going to be installing a Euromoto Electrics Enduralast Alternator Kit, a 1976 Moto Guzzi T3. The Euromoto Electrics Enduralast Alternator Kit is comprised of these components for the Moto Guzzi application. Also included is this complete instruction manual. We've already prepped the bike for the installation. The alternator cover is removed, the battery has been disconnected, the fuel tank has been removed in order to gain access to the voltage regulator and related wiring. Before we remove the stock alternator, we're going to have to disconnect the stock alternator harness. We've already removed the right side cover to gain access to the diode board connectors. And what I'm going to do quickly is point them out for you. You've got a yellow three-way connector with three wires. You've got a single red, a single blue, and most importantly on a T3, you've got a light blue that's tucked up under the mounting frame. And what I'll do is remove them now. And that completes the removal on this side of the diode board. We still have two more wires to remove on the back side and then we'll be completely disconnected from the charging system. We've moved to the back side of the diode board. You can see two red connectors, a large spade and a small spade. We will be disconnecting those, but as a note, this motorcycle is equipped with a small battery box and a small gel battery. Uh, you're going to need to remove your battery entirely to gain access to the back side of the diode board. And that will also help facilitate, of course, with the removal of the diode board itself. I'm going to disconnect these two wires. And that completes the removal of the charging harness from the diode board. Now you're ready to pull the diode board. The last element of the original charging system we'll be removing today is the uh, voltage regulator which in its stock location is just beneath the top tube and this emphasizes the point you are going to need to remove your tank anyway. And uh, this particular motorcycle is equipped with a Bosch solid state adjustable voltage regulator. Uh, the connector for both stock and this unit is the same and it's simply uh, unplug it and you're done. With the stock wiring harness removed from both the alternator and the diode board, we come back up front to remove the stator. The stator is held in place by three bolts, two of which I've already removed. I'm going to remove the third, and you should be able to firmly grasp the stator, twist, and pull it off the rotor. If you run into problems, any undue resistance, you're going to need to use a soft hammer or some type of soft pry bar. In order to remove the rotor, you're going to need to remove this bolt. Now we've engaged the motorcycle in first gear. I'm also depressing the foot lever for the rear brake. And there we go. You are going to have to remove this bolt entirely. So you can insert a specialty tool that's been included by Euromoto Electrics in their hardware kit. This is a specially tapered stainless steel piece that we're going to insert right into the rotor. We're going to replace the bolt. And in a minute I'll be back with the bolt seated in place. Now I've installed the specialty tool so the small end of the taper is in first. I've replaced the stack bolt. I've tightened it down with a small Allen wrench just to have mm, what I call healthy resistance. Now I'm going to cup the rotor and I'm going to try and turn. And that's, that's really healthy tight. And now I'm just going to try and tap the rotor. And there you go. And it'll pop right off so make sure you're holding on to the rotor when you take it out. There is the specialty tool. We're now ready to install the Euromoto Electrics rotor, but before we do, we've removed all contaminants from the tapered end of the crankshaft. Per the Euromoto Electrics instructions, we've used compressed air to blow this cap off. 
And the reason for that is this is the, the sealing surface that meets the lips of the seal. And what we're going to do is uh, we'll turn this in by hand until we get a little bit of resistance and then we'll be back in a minute to seat it in place. Okay, now you can see we have the Euromoto Electrics rotor seated in place. Torque is set to manufacture specifications and we're ready to move on to the stator. At this point we've installed, as you can see, the stator frame, the rear, the front. The orientation of the Euromoto Electrics logo is at 12 o'clock. We've seated in the uh, stainless steel Allens that are provided. We did rotate the rear wheel with the bike in gear just to make sure that the rotor is turning freely and it is. And that uh, wraps up that part of the installation. And last we have the third item in our installation. We've already installed the rotor and uh, stator. This is the combination unit which is a voltage regulator and a rectifier. We want to tuck it up somewhere that gets maximum airflow to facilitate the heat sink design. And as far as the wiring harness itself, refer back to your manual for all the connections and make sure you follow all the startup procedures just the way they're laid out. The stock diode board and voltage regulator have been replaced by the single sealed unit. This combination unit has been designed to seal out dust and moisture and to resist vibration which has caused so many failures in the original system. The Enduralast kit has been designed to provide long-lasting, trouble-free operation. To ensure a trouble-free installation, be sure to read and understand the 20-page illustrated guidelines. Everything you need other than tools and time are there. You will need to use the appropriate Motoguzzi wiring diagram for your application. Lay out your installation kit. Familiarize yourself with all of the components. Your kit is very well sorted and comprehensive. State-of-the-art pods of lock and marine grade shrink tube connectors are provided. The most frequently asked post-installation question almost always relates to the incorrect installation of the black wire emanating from the rectifier unit. The combination unit senses battery voltage, 12.5 volts or higher. We connected ours to the hot side of the coil. It shares the same post as the white ignition start-stop switch wire and the blue-black striped wire that connects to the other coil. Remember to ground the combination unit. To ensure a good ground, run a ring connector from the housing mount to battery negative. That way you can't go on. 